Another noisy day here in winter. Jacques just had to change out of his pants too in the hot. shorts. Too hot it's too hot in winter apparently. Degrees. Anyways, we got a lot of things to do today. There's a lot of things going on. The epic pathway is actually being built as we speak, but we need to move some beds. We need to prep the chicken coop and a whole lot more. Before we head out in the front, take a look. That radish method from last video is working really well. Beets are coming up. You can see a little peak of them right there. And then the carrots, sad. <laughs> we're still waiting. Carrots take a while to germinate yeah, though. at least a week. Yeah. Right now we're just digging out the pathway area. This is our level line right there. And here's kind of the way it's gonna be arranged. So, a lot of progress. Jacques heading out to the strawberry beds. We're gonna do a little harvest. So this is the bed that has to move. And the reason why is because this is our right side of the path and it's gonna be about three foot, 10 inches. So it's actually gonna come in on this bed. And we're rethinking the berry patch anyways. I don't even think these are blueberries at this point. I think something random was put in these and sold as blueberries and we have this weird Frankenstein's monster. But what we need to do is get these strawberries out of here. We're gonna harvest. There's actually quite a few for late December. See if you can hunt one down, Jacques. This is a good one. Give it that, give it that taste test. I know he does it when I'm not looking anyways. It's true. It's actually really good. Yeah. Better than any store bought. Not as sweet, but still good. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is deconstruct the bed. I think we wanna move it. And we're gonna pot out all the strawberries that still exist in their own pots, figure out where to put this bed. But for now, it just needs to get out of the way here. So I'm gonna look at it, look for any runners by running my fingers along it. And there's yep. one. So it probably started there. Then I'll come in right underneath. We'll take a look at the roots. Oh. Decent, healthy root system there. Yeah. That's nice. That's gonna transplant. You can see there's some white roots, so it's still alive. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll we, that. we're coming through and just kind of cleaning up too. You would take off little guys like that, etc. And then right now- we'll Refresh. Yeah, we're just tossing them over here. We're gonna end up transplanting them into this grow bag for the winter and we'll bring them back to the future strawberry bed once we decide where that is. So as I was splitting some of these crowns apart, you can see we have some little roly polies or pill bugs in here, and that's what's been eating most of these plants. And so what's interesting is as these have sort of clumped up and kind of gotten a little sloppy over the winter, I think some of that decaying plant material has attracted the pill bugs and they've actually gotten themselves entangled in these roots. So something to think about when you're looking at these sort of eaten away leaves here that you don't really know what's causing it. Sometimes they're hanging out right in that crown zone. So it doesn't look the nicest, but certainly these will all transplant in. And we probably have as many or more strawberries than we actually started in this bed for the next season. These are ever bearing strawberries. So a creative way to clean up a strawberry patch and sort of reset it for the next season. Now we just have to get this bed out of here. And a lot of people think that you have to unscrew every panel of the birdies beds to do that but you actually don't. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get a bed up out of the ground and move it. So Jacques, get on that side. I'll grab this corner here, three, two, one. <laughs> Pretty easy. Now you have a bunch of soil you have to move, but that's fine. If you wanted to move it just a couple feet that way to get out of the way of an obstacle and refill it, it would literally be about a 10 minute job. Now we need to get this soil out of the way. So here's a little cross section of the soil. You can see the corrugation imprint there. But take a look at what else you see. You see these Bermuda grass markings. We did not put as much cardboard as we wanted to on the bottom there and Bermuda did eventually start to creep its way all the way up. So a very important point is to make sure that you put a lot of cardboard down before you plant on top of Bermuda. And another little benefit here, look at this worm. Dude, this worm is honestly weird looking. Whoa, dude, and it feels weird. Whoa. Oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like nude. It's like, it's got this like sheen, it's got this little sheen to it. Is this an alien? Is this a new species? What is that? It's so shiny. What dude, is this a, dude, I can see it. I can see a tongue. Is this a snake? Is this a little snake? Dude, honestly, is this a little snake? Look, possible? dude, it's a little snake. Oh, it is. It's, it's snake. a little snake. Oh my God. <laughs> blind snake. We got a Brahmini blind snake. Oh. <laughs> Oh! I didn't even know that's a thing. Oh my God. Yes. So I freaked out a little bit. Kevin Thornberry, if you get that reference. But what we actually found was a Brahmini blind snake. And you can see him or her right here. This is the only snake that is in existence on Hawaii because it's been brought in nursery pots. 
I guess there were no snakes in Hawaii before that moment in time. You can see there's a little tongue and it is blind, but it does have eyes. The eyes are just like recessed in the skin. So these guys like to eat ants, they like to eat termites. I'm gonna eventually put them back into the soil, probably somewhere over there, and we're moving on. Because we just checked the forecast and we're getting what? An inch of rain? An inch to two inches potentially. Almost two inches of rain. This year that's probably a fourth of the rain we've gotten. Yeah. So we need to prep this land. I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna to do to prepare the garden and all the systems here at the homestead for the rain. Step number one is to flush all of the first flush filters. So this is the main one over here. So I've opened it up and what that is, is this is the area where the rainwater comes down and just collects. So the first bit of rainwater collects in this tube here. So if you know it's gonna rain again, you have to flush it out so it can recollect. You'll get a better sense of it here on the shed rainwater tank because this one has yet to be plugged into anything. And so you can see if I just twist this, tons of water just pours out, which we have to drain out so that we don't put a bunch of debris into the tank. Final one is our tank out here in the front that's collecting off the cobblestone, that little tiny little section. I do need to put some plugs here just to make sure that I'm not putting a bunch of water right next to my house, which is not ideal, but for now it's fine. Another thing you have to do is make sure that you clear your leaf filters out. So as the name implies, this makes sure that all the debris that comes out when you first wash rain over this doesn't go into your tank, but you can't leave it there either. So you gotta clear it out so we can filter it off again. Okay, we've prepped for the rainwater collection, but now what we have to prep for is the flow of rainwater over this landscape. You can see the pond. We don't want a lot of sediment getting in that pond. Jacques was here last time it rained. I wasn't here. I was on a top secret mission. Jacques was manning the fortress and what happened, dude? Basically, so much water came down that it washed some of this dirt into the pond and the reservoir. Yeah, and it, it stayed murky for days yep. after that. And you can that. actually see it around the rocks too. So. Yeah, and it's not the worst thing in the world. You're gonna get some dirt in the pond, not a big deal. It'll filter through the underground system, but you don't want to get it there if you don't have to. So what we're gonna try to do is a creative solution to build a lot of berms and swales to kind of direct the water away from all that area. I'm up here on top of the pond surveying the kingdom, but this is a kingdom that we need to protect because look, you've got this sort of cakey soil here that it's really just topsoil that's been shifted. So of course we need to plant this in, but if you look at the slope, if water falls on this surface, it's gonna roll down the rocks and go straight into the pond here. Same with this area this area may overflow, and that's to say nothing of this area over here, back where these rocks are, that's at a higher grade than certainly the pond and even this area here. So what we noticed last time is the water just came sort of rushing down. So what Jacques had to do is get really creative while it was raining, run out with this trenching shovel over here and dig a little berm to kind of direct the water away from the pond. I would say he did a pretty good job on short notice, but now that we have noticed, what we're gonna do is take this little guy and this trenching shovel over here and see what we can do to kind of rough this area up, create a bunch of zigzaggy type of swales to catch as much of the runoff before it gets here, give it time to soak into the soil so we don't mess with our pond and we don't mess with our paver base, which is over there. All right, the boys are back in town like Thin Lizzy. I've got this guy, which is called the banana from Corona Tools. It actually is called the banana. Oh, really? And then you've got uh, the mattock, which is Jacques' favorite tool. Very effective. Favorite tool. So he's going to kind of create the S, and then I'm going to dig it out. So we'll see how well this does, but it's really mostly just digging a couple inch trench here, throwing a little soil on this side. We're eventually going to have to solve this side as well for the paper base because they just compacted it, so I don't really want to mess with that a lot. I'm thinking we maybe go like three feet. Do a couple. Three feet apart, sidewind it all the way back to there. Sure. And we got a little treat after this. All right, most of our trenches have been dug here. It looks very sloppy. You'll see in the next episode how this works out for us, but the treat is what comes in right back here. Guess who's in town? Daddy Wheat sees it. <laughs> We got 50, what, 20 pounds of the winter wheat. You guys remember, we baked a loaf of bread with this wheat last season. We're starting it off right this time. We're improving on our methods. Jacques behind the camera. He knows that I'm about to bake probably one of the best loaves of his life that he can't compete with. <laughs> he can't compete with it. I dug with the banana trencher, just like very shallow trenches. So all we're thinking about is, hey, if it's gonna rain anyways, 
why don't we throw some rows of wheat in and just keep it really casual with the way we seed it. Because trust me, we have plenty. Oh look, Bobka. Somebody's here to help. Someone's here to help. Come here, Bobka. Apparently Jacques said he uh, cared for this cat as if it was his own. <laughs> Watch and out. named it Bobka, but it's on my property now, so I'm naming it Jock. <laughs> This is little shock. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, we do have a pet cat now, apparently. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is just liberally sprinkle down the down the rows here. We'll just lightly cover them up. We'll see what happens in the rain. We have a solution, we think. Jacques dug a trench right here. What we wanted to do was say, okay, well, you'd rather have the pond be at the higher point. You'd rather have the water kind of sloping away from the pond, but we couldn't figure out a great way to do that. So here's what we did. So what we did is the Sorry. banana trench <laughs> daddy over here, he threw down a beautiful trench that comes this way. Yeah, some water may still run that way, but we have this huge hole here that we dug just in case we ever might want an epic jacuzzi. And what we did then is put some of these river stones that actually are also lining the pond. And why don't you explain the reason we did that, Jock? That way, as the dirt washes into it, at least it won't jam up the channel and the water could still flow in between the rocks. So even if some dirt gets in, it'll still be permeable to water. So just to recap, what we did is we cleared the first flush, we cleared the leaf filters, we created some weird sort of trenches and swales. I don't know what you want to call that here. I also moved some of the mulch near the gravel paver base because they just put that in today and it's about to rain tomorrow. So I want to make sure that as little water gets in there as possible. That's it for today's show. Stay tuned for the next episode when we actually see what the rain did and see how well we did. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.